a very good evening uh, to all uh, dear brothers and sisters in christ so we thank our uh, almighty god and we thank our lord and savior jesus christ uh, for giving this uh, wonderful opportunity to study his wonderful words of life so last week we studied the important subject uh, that is about uh, uh, the lord's memorial supper so when do we need to take the lord's memorial supper when when do we need to take one year april month okay once a year april month okay what about others anil brother munna sister romi sister amar brother sunita sister once a year nisan 14 good okay once a year okay ah uh, romi sister Yes, brother, once a year. Good. Okay. Anil brother, Sunita sister. Yes, brother, once on a year. We don't need to take every day or every month. Good. Good. So, good. You understood. Okay. Now, we will see one more important uh, subject uh, today. And uh, that is very, very important. Uh, so, uh, I need and I request everybody uh, to please concentrate, open your Bibles and uh, read each and every verse uh, okay, for yourself and uh, kindly make notes. If you have any doubts, if you still have any questions, definitely we will look into all the questions. Don't hesitate to ask any questions. But I'm sure by the end of the subject, all the questions uh, will definitely be, you see, cleared up. So, today... Our subject is about uh, tongues, uh, miracles, uh, and this uh, charismatic, uh, you see, works that are happening in uh, Christendom. Because uh, we see that uh, there are a lot of, uh, you see, uh, meetings done in all over the world, where uh, huge crowd of Christians are gathered, and you see, lakhs, lakhs together, and a huge number of people are there. And a lot of miracles uh, happening. And uh, the people speaking in, uh, you see, various uh, tongues. Uh, uh, there also we have seen those people who don't have eyes, uh, they will get eyes. Uh, the lame people will walk. Uh, the deaf will hear. You see, so all the people who have diseases, all those things will be cured. So, at this moment, uh, after coming through so much of Bible study, it is very important uh, that uh, we need to understand and we need to study this uh, subject also. Why? Why this is so important, brother? This is just faith, no, brother? Why do we need to study all these things? Uh, is it required? This is all faith. Uh, this is done by our Lord. Uh, so, why that uh, study is required? Because there is a very important verse which Jesus himself tells uh, in Matthew 7 chapter, 21 to 23. So, it is our duty to study. Let us read Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Uh, Anil Buddha, can you read? <clears throat> Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, that in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, here Jesus tells uh, about many people will come in that day, who did uh, miracles in his name, who did, uh, you see, many prophecies uh, in his name, who cast off devils uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, of course, uh, who does in Jesus' name? It is only Christians. Uh, it doesn't apply to anybody else. So, here, yeah, in the name of Jesus, many Christians will do this activity. But what did Jesus say? 
Jesus never said that I will acknowledge you all, that you are all God's children. But he said clearly that I will uh, tell unto them that I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. How come doing miracles in the name of Jesus? Healing in the name of Jesus, casting out devils in the name of Jesus. How can these be the works of iniquity? You see, how can this not be the will of God? But Jesus wants us. So, if Jesus has warned himself, then it is our duty to study which one to believe, which one not to believe. Let us read one more verse in Matthew 24, 24. Uh, Romy sister or Amar brother, can you read Matthew 24, 24? Mm -hmm. 24, 24. Hmm. For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets and shall see great sign and wonders uh, in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very uh, elect. See? What did Jesus say? He said false Christ false prophets shall come with him sir. And they shall do great signs and wonders with him. Now, this will do in the name of Christ only, it seems. It will be such a level that if it were possible, it would deceive the real God's children, the very elect. It will be in such a way, these miracles will happen, it seems. So, if Jesus has warned us in two places not to believe everything, it is our duty today, you see, to study and examine everything. Because these miracles... Prophecy, speaking in tongues, you see the visions are all happening in almost all the churches of this world. So, today we will study one by one, one by one. You see, what the Bible says about tongues, what does the Bible says about miracles, what does the Bible says about prophecy, and what the Bible says about vision. So, first of all, let us speak and let us study about tongues. Now, what is tongues? Huh? Have you all spoken in tongues? Do did anybody oh does anybody speak in tongues here? Anybody? Anil brother, Sudita Sir, Gopal brother, Joel brother, Munaster, Romester, Amar brother, anybody? Anybody do you speak in tongues? Used to before. Oh, used to before. You stopped it. Okay. Yes. So, anybody else? I I also used to talk. Oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> you used to talk. Tongues. <laughs> huh? Tongues. <laughs> huh? So, huh? Raju also spoke. So, let us study from the Bible. Okay. So, what does the Bible say about tongues? See, Apostle Paul. Clearly says about the gift of the Holy Spirit in First Corinthians 12 chapter. Because uh, tongues, uh, you see, that is uh, become so famous uh, among the churches. Uh, they believe that everybody should speak in tongues because that is a sign of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so one who is anointed with the Holy Spirit, uh, automatically they will speak in tongues. God will give them languages and they will speak uh, in tongues. So, so tongues, uh, this is tongues. Uh, so, what does the Bible say? Huh? Can all prophesy? Can all speak in tongues? Yeah, and uh, those who don't speak in tongues, uh, and those who don't prophesy, does it mean that they don't have Holy Spirit? What does the Bible say? Let us read First Corinthians 12 chapter. 29 and 30. Uh, Munna sister, can you read 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 29 and 30? Are all apostles, are all prophets, 
are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. Ah, see, do all. Apostle Paul puts a question. Can all do all these things? You see, dear brethren, no. Apostle Paul putting a question itself is a clear statement that uh, not everybody has this gift of the Holy Spirit. Just because, uh, you see, you don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that that person doesn't have Holy Spirit at all. So many people, you know, come to a conclusion that one who doesn't speak tongues, miracles, nothing can happen means they don't have Holy Spirit. But Apostle Paul clearly says there are diverse, uh, you see, gift of the Holy Spirit. So the gift of the Holy Spirit has to be differentiated between the Holy Spirit itself. You see, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So let us read 1 Corinthians 12 chapter 7 to 11. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 7 to 11, brother? But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For the one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophesy, to another discerning of Spirit, to another diverse kind of tongues, to another the interpretation, interpretation of tongues, but all the worketh uh, that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man sever severally as he will. See, it is a one and the same spirit. You see, what does it mean that everybody should have everything? No, it is the same spirit that gives one wisdom, other, you see, knowledge, other, faith, but doesn't mean that everybody should have the same gift. You see, dear brethren, so this gift is not important. But uh, even those who don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit, to them, it is very clear that the Holy Spirit is still there with them. That's what this clearly says. But all this work of that one and the self same Spirit, uh, dividing to every man. As per whose will? As per not their will, as per God's will. Therefore, Apostle Paul, you see, he knew that not everybody can, can do all these things and all. The gift is not common for everybody. So it's for only for a special purpose. We'll see today. Okay. Today we'll see what is the special purpose. Hence, Apostle Paul clearly said, you see, instead of desiring and coveting for these gifts of the Holy Spirit, I will show you a better way. Where the person without even the gift of the Holy Spirit, yet he can have the fruits of the Spirit with him and do more excellent way. You see, let us read 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 31. 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 31. Sunita, sister, you are there? Sunita, sister, you are there? Yes, brother. Uh, sister, can you read 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 31 and next continue to 13 chapter also. 13. But COVID earnestly, earnestly the best gifts and yet you the you I unto you a more excellent way. Mm. See, Apostle Paul tells, uh, I will show you a better way. This gift is not important. Better than this one, this is an excellent way. Which is that one, sir? Now continue. 13th chapter, first verse. 
Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Ah, see, he clearly says, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels have now, I don't have charity and become as a sounding brass, as a tinkling cymbal. See, so here clearly, you see, Apostle Paul tells that, uh, you see, love is very, very important. You see, so attaining love is very important, not the gift of the Holy Spirit. I show you an excellent way, much better than, you see, speaking in tongues, much better than healing, much better than miracles. So, now let us study about tongues. The first time the Bible speaks about tongues, that is given to us in Acts 2nd chapter. Acts 2nd chapter verses 1 to 4. When the Holy Spirit was poured upon the apostles, they began to speak in tongues. Now let us see what actually happened there. Read Acts 2nd chapter verses 1 to 4. Uh, Romy's sister, can you read Acts 2nd chapter verses 1 to 4? Uh, Ramesha, you're there? Yes, yes. I'm okay. Uh, Acts 2nd chapter, verses uh, 1 to 4. Okay. And when the day of uh, Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in, the, in one place. And suddenly uh, there came a sound of heaven at of a rust rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them uh, cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them um, utterance. utterance. Hmm. Uh, thank you, sir. So, here the Holy Spirit, uh, you see, came upon them. The entire room was uh, filled uh, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and uh, they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, here, uh, you see, the first time, uh, you see, the apostles uh, began to speak in tongues. The second incident is given to us in Acts 10 chapter. When the Holy Spirit was again poured upon the Gentiles, it happened the same way. There also, they began to speak in tongues. Let us read Acts 10 chapter verses 44 to 46. Acts 10 chapter 44 to 46. Uh, Gobal brother, can you read? Sure, brother. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the, heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter. Okay. There also they spoke in tongues and magnified God. So these two incidents, you see, that's the first, you see, time that's given in the Bible where the Holy Spirit was poured upon the Jewish people, the disciples, they spoke in tongues. The next three and a half years later, the Holy Spirit was poured upon Gentiles, they spoke in tongues. Okay. Now what actually happened here? You see, there the Holy Spirit came. You see, uh, it came like a sound of a gushing uh, wind, you see, and there appeared cloves uh, of uh, tongues of fire, you see, and uh, it filled uh, everybody of them. So everybody thinks uh, that means, oh, fire, 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 fire came on the day of Pentecost. Uh, so, Holy Spirit, uh, 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 revival fire, you see, uh, holy fire, uh, they think. Uh. But there, 
did fire come or what came let us read that verse again read acts uh, second chapter verse 2 adil bodu read bodara acts 2 2 <laughs> and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them ele uh, cloven tongues like a, a fire and it shall upon each of them mm. you see what is given there fire came uh. no fire came it says you see and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire not fire like as fire you see and it sat upon them and each of them began to speaking the tongues which god gave them utterances so everybody thinks that when god spoke the holy spirit fire came they all began to speak in tongues everything you see let us be calm we should read continue reading the verses also because we have studied now to study the bible contextual study you see we need to just uh, not come to conclusion based on one verse uh, but we need to continue reading the verses uh, then only we will come to the proper understanding so continue reading verses uh, 5 to 11 brother anil brother please continue from verse 5 to 11 please read let us see what actually happened there please everybody concentrate ah uh. and they were dwelling jerusalem jews devout men out of every nation under heaven now when this was noised abroad the multitudes came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language huh? and they every man speak in his own language own language you see when god's holy spirit came upon them they began to speak in tongues means what which language unknown language see beautifully is clearly given in verse 6 that everybody every other persons heard the apostles speaking in their own language now which is your own language you know what do we call for own language we call it as mother tongue correct no yeah which is your mother tongue means what will be your reply you will tell my mother tongue is ha uh, huh? nepali correct ah uh, will you tell my mother tongue is yellow or uh, pink green no mother tongue means what uh? mother tongue means the language in which we are born and brought up uh. you see that is the meaning of tongues uh. see it's beautifully given they spoke in their own languages uh. and how many languages did they speak uh? please continue brother from verse 7 ah uh. and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold are not all these which speak galatians and how hear we every man in our own tongue how Where? we hear we every man in our own tongue that means the language which the apostles spoke was clearly understood by the other people and they gave the testimony saying how come these are galileans and they know our language and they are speaking in our languages our tongues how many languages are there continue brother uh. where in we were born parthians and mm, count parthians mm. medes mm. and elamites mm. and the dwellers in mesopotamia and in juda and copadocia in pontus and asia phrygia and pamphylia in egypt and in the part of libya about cyrene cyrene and strangers of rome jews and proselytes critics and Ab arabians we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of god See? 17 countries so they spoke in 17 languages not in 17 unknown you see languages which none of them understood 
17 people from different, different places had been gathered there. More than lots of people and they clearly understood what they spoke. They spoke uh, in their own tongues. You see, verse 11, it clearly says, so. Hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So, this is very clear. The tongue is not an unknown language. The tongues means it is a clearly understandable language. Today, you know, everybody thinks that uh, tongues means what, uh, huh? which nobody can understand. She was and if you speak like this, uh, what, uh, that is a beautiful sign that is filled with Holy Spirit. Uh, so the more you speak in tongues, uh, the, it is very clear sign that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh. See what Apostle Paul tells in 1 Corinthians 14 chapter. 1 Corinthians 14.22 Amar Budar, can you read 1 Corinthians 14.22? Where? Uh, where? For tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not, see? but you see? Huh? Very clearly, it says tongue. Them. Okay, thank you, brother. So it clearly says tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe. It is not a sign for believers. You see, everybody missionary to that one only. That is a sign for a believer. That he is a believer. He is filled with the Holy Spirit. No. It is a sign to them that believe not. So, what actually happened in the Church of Corinthians? If you see it, brethren, actually, Church of Corinthians was a very big church compared to all the churches which apostles had established. And Corinthians was a very good business hub. All the police people from various places, they used to gather there to do a lot of business transactions. It was like our Bombay, you see, all the various people, all the business transactions, our uh, stock exchange, where is it? It's in Bombay only. See, huge financial transactions used to happen there and all the people from various languages used to come there. So, in the Corinthian church, there were a lot of people from various languages, you see, and they used to gather in a single uh, shelter to do the worship of the Lord. And during that time, each and every person used to speak in their own language and show off uh, that uh, I know so many languages. Uh, and this is what uh, Apostle Paul uh, clearly corrects them. You see, clearly condemns them that this should not be so. Read First Corinthians 14.23. First Corinthians 14.23. Muna sister, can you read? If therefore the whole source be come together into one place, and all is speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unknown or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? See? Will they not say that they are mad? That's what they will be feels, no? Huh? If they keep on speaking in tongues, uh, the unknown persons were uh, standing outside. What will they think? Yo, these people are mad. You see how they are speaking? They will think, no? That is what Apostle Paul is saying. You see? Huh? When an unbeliever comes, will they not say that they are mad? Therefore, you see, Apostle Paul tells, you see, the tongue always should be an understandable language. You see, it should be spoken in such a way, a very clear way, where other persons can clearly understand the language. Read 1 Corinthians 14 chapter 14 to 17. 1 Corinthians 14 chapter 14 to 17. Uh, Joel Buddha, can you read? For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayed, but my understanding is unfruitful what is is it then i will pray with the spirit 
and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupied the room of the all known say Amen? At thy giving of thanks, sing he understood, understand uh, not what thou sayest. For thou verily give, givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. See? Apostle Paul tells, if you are praying in an unknown tongue, which uh, other persons can't understand, what is the benefit of it? Uh, you are doing it with your understanding. You can understand that language. But what about the others? Uh, they are not able to understand that language. So what is the use of it? Uh, in the end, how will you say Amen for your prayer? Because he has understood nothing. Therefore, Apostle Paul clearly says, uh, you see, huh? I will uh, speak uh, uh, more tongues than everybody, but in the church, uh, I will speak rather only five words where other people can clearly understand so that I can edify others. Uh, continue, brother. Joel, brother, please continue till verse 20. 18 to 20? Ah. Okay. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than ye all, yet in the church I, ha I had rather speak five words with my understanding, that, that by my voice I might teach other also than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice by ye children, but in understanding be man. See, Apostle Paul says, I thank God that I speak, uh, you see, in tongues more than all of you. Does it mean that uh, he spoke in the churches um, only in tongues? You see? Uh, what does he say? But in the church, uh, I will speak only five words uh, which others can understand uh, rather than speaking 10,000 words which nobody can understand. You see, therefore, uh, you see, he tells, uh, be not uh, like a children, don't behave like a children, uh, and be, you see, matured like men, be of understanding. Uh, therefore, dear brethren, Apostle Paul also gives us an example of some, uh, you see, musical uh, instruments, uh, and he tells all the musical instruments, like for a trumpet and everything, various trumpets were there, each and every trumpet had a meaning. Uh, and, you see, it gave a clear sound so that others can understand. So, if that uh, trumpet itself uh, did not give a clear sound, how will the other people understand and prepare themselves for the war? So, as each and every equipment, a musical instruments has got a meaning, similarly, each and every language uh, has to be, have a meaning. Each and every languages in this world must and should have a meaning. If there is no meaning at all, that is not a language, that is not a tongue at all. Read, same in 1 Corinthians 14 chapter, verses 7 to 11. Uh, 7 to 11. Uh, Gopal Buddha, can you read? And even things without, without life giving sound, uh, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is pipe or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to, to the battle? So likewise, ye except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood. How shall it be unknown what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without significance. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Mm -hmm. See, there are uh, so many kinds of voices in this world 
and none of them is without significance. Every voice, you see, every language has got a meaning. Let it be any language. Even if you go to any remote place also, this has got a meaning. Therefore, if the language doesn't have a meaning at all, you will be a barbarian. So, Apostle Paul clearly says that uh, each and every language has got a clear meaning. So, even the tongues which you speak should be having a meaning. Therefore, Apostle Paul clearly puts a condition saying, uh, you see, in the church, if anybody speaks in the tongues, they should be an interpreter, a person to interpret the meaning of the tongues. And if there is nobody who can interpret the tongues, the meaning of the tongues, and clearly explain what language they are speaking, Apostle Paul tells, is better that you don't speak at all. See, 1 Corinthians 4 chapter, verse 5. 1 Corinthians 4 chapter, verse 5. Sunita, sister, can you read? 1 Corinthians 4, 5. I think, brother, 1 Corinthians 14, 5. That's... Oh, 4, 14, 5. Sorry. 1 Corinthians 14, 5. I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied, for greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Except he interpret that the church may receive edification. So there should be an interpreter. If there is no interpreter, Apostle Paul tells that you better keep quiet. And there is a condition also. Not that everybody can speak in tongues at a time. Apostle Paul clearly says, if anybody has to speak in tongues in the church, it should be maximum two or three. Not more than that one. Read verse 27 and 29. Star. 1 Corinthians 14 chapter 27 to 29. Star. If any man speak speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. <laughs> He clearly says, if any man speak in a tongue, let it be two or maximum three. And let one interpreter. Others should come and explain clearly interpreter. You see, but if there is no interpreter, Apostle Paul says, let him keep silence in the church. Now, which of the churches follow it? You tell me. Huh? Only two or three people speak. Huh? Only two or three will keep silent. All the church will keep on shouting. You see, and is there any interpreter? Is there any explanation of the tongues? It is totally confusion. You see, hence Apostle Paul tells in verse 33 that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. You see, dear brethren, so today what we see in the churches where everybody keeps on speaking in a, in a confused manner, it is not at all the scriptural way. Therefore, you see, the two incidents what we studied, where God's Holy Spirit was poured upon the, you see, Jews first and the Gentile next. There also, you observe it, in both the incidents, they spoke in tongues. And who recognized that they were speaking in tongues? You see, it is not uh, their own people, the other people, the unbelievers, you see, from different nations, they clearly understood that they are speaking in uh, their mother tongue. So this is the way it should be. Not that uh, I speak and I only start interpreting. No, 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 no. You see, if I speak in tongues, other person should interpret it. Who, who should be? That person should be a layman. You see, even he should understand the meaning of the tongues and give a clear explanation. You see, that is the, you see, what the Bible says. You see, where this was in Acts 2, 6, it says, that every man heard them speak in his own language. In Acts 10, 45, you see, and uh, God has poured the Holy Spirit upon them. They spoke in tongues and glorified God. Still, uh, some people think that, uh, no brother, uh, speaking in tongues means uh, it is like uh, having communication with God. You see, 
Now nobody understands. Only God can understand this language. Why? Because there is a verse in the Bible that says like that. So let us read 1 Corinthians 14 2. 1 Corinthians 14 2. Uh, Romy sister, can you read? For the he had to speak it in in an unknown tongue, speak it, speak it not unto men, but unto God. For no man under, understand him, how, how wait in the spirit he speaketh mystery, mysteries. Uh, mysteries, uh, you see? Apostle Paul tells now, how oh, either speaketh in a tongue, you see, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. No man can understand it, uh, but he is speaking mysteries uh, to God, it seems. Okay, pa. let us think and let us take it like this only. That uh, tongues is the unknown language which nobody can understand. Only God can understand. Okay? And uh, they are speaking mysteries to God. What mystery you are speaking to God? What is so secret that God doesn't know anything? Uh? Uh, our sitting and our standing. The words which we speak, uh, even before it comes in our mouth, uh, even those things, God knows. Uh, God knows everything. Then what is the mystery that you, God himself doesn't know? You are explaining some mysteries to God. Huh? You see, dear brethren, and moreover, you see, did not uh, anybody uh, speak, uh, have communication with God? If you see, many people had communication. Like, for example, uh, you see, Abraham, God called Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. You see, now, how did Abraham speak? Uh? How did God call from, uh, you see, the heaven? He spoke through an angel. God called Abraham, no? Abraham, Abraham. You see, huh? correct, no? Then what did Abraham reply? Did he reply, Shiva Barabha, Yibar, 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 Yibar? Did God tell, Gabor, Yibar, 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 Yibar? Did God tell like this one? Huh? How was the communication like this one? No, it was a clear cut language, dear brethren. There was no such language at all. You see, if it was so, God would have clearly recorded it. Huh? When God spoke to Moses in the burning bush, what did God tell? Moses, Moses, please remove thy sandal. Huh? The you see the land, the soil in which you are standing is a holy ground. How did Moses reply? Did Moses reply, give a I am speaking mysteries? Oh, nobody should understand, only God should understand. No, there was no such uh, communication at all, but it was very clear communication. Understanding mysteries of God. Huh? What is the mystery? Huh? Who spoke mysteries? Read Matthew 13, chapter brother. Matthew 13, chapter. <coughs> 11th verse, Matthew 13, 11. Munna sister, can you read Matthew 13, 11? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. See, Jesus spoke mysteries of heaven, and only the disciples understood it. Now, how did Jesus speak to the disciples? Did he speak in unknown language so nobody could understand? No, he spoke in parables. Clear parables, but the meaning was hidden. You see, uh, that one we can understand. But he did not speak in a very confused uh, yeah, language as it was spoken today. Okay, even if it is, uh, uh, even if this uh, tongue is a uh, language of God, okay, uh, as many claim, because Bible tells uh, angels have a language. Let us read 1 Corinthians 13 1. 1 Corinthians 13 1. Uh, Amar brother, can you read 1 Corinthians 13 1? Do I speak with the tongues of mean and mean and of angels? And have not uh, charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling uh, shim shimmel. Okay. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, so angels has a language. Okay, pa. 
Uh, some people tell me that this is the angel's uh, language which nobody can understand. You see? Okay. This is the angel's language, no? At least, angels should be having some language. Okay, we'll agree. Then, angels uh, has some sort of communication also. So, that means, their language is a common language. It can't be a varied language, uh, angel to angel, each and every angel has uh, different languages. Uh, it's one heaven, angels, holy angels, they should be having one, co one common language. So, if they come and speak to this person, if that person understands the angelic language and this person communicates to the angels in angelic language, why don't you make a book, no? Like uh, as we teach in school, A for apple, B for boy, B for bat. Isn't it? Make a book, no? Angelic book, oh, right? A for what? What is the meaning of A for the angels? What is the meaning of a B? What is the meaning of the one? Write a book, no? Publish it for the whole world. It will be very easy, no? Everybody can communicate in this mystery language. Uh, you see, tongue language to God, no? For this one, they'll tell you, you Satan will understand. What can Satan do when God is for us? You see, when God is with us, Satan can't do anything. Read Romans 8.31. Romans 8.31. Anil Buddha, can you read Romans 8.31? What shall we then say to these things if God be for us who can be against us who can be against us if God is there with us nobody can stand against us dear brethren Job example of Job Job was a faithful person you see and he was a very good person who eschewed evil he was you know he was so faithful that uh, God had given a protection and Satan could not touch him at all you see God has given that one in Job, first chapter 10th verse. Satan asked God, no, huh? you have put a hedge upon him, around him, there is a, you see, hedge, so I can't touch him. So without God's permission, nobody can touch God's children. So forget about language. What can he do by understanding our language? Dear brethren, nothing. This is a complete deception of the devil. See, to use blabberings to deceive mankind. Actually, these types of blabberings, you know, you who speak? A small child, like Lulia. See, how does she speak? If I know at least she is better. She is saying, Jai Masi, I had tea, biscuit and all these things. Or else, how did she speak when we came last time? That's what the speaker. You see, if you speak in this way, what else can Apostle Paul say? That you are speaking like a child. You are speaking like, you see, that nobody understands. Only God can understand. If his child speaks like this one, what will uh, Romy's sister tell? Ayo. Are you a child? Are you a baby? What you are speaking? I don't know. Only God can understand your language. That's what Romy's sister and her brother will tell. Ultimately, if Lulia's speech is not understood by anybody, similarly, Apostle Paul also saying in 1 Corinthians 14 to, if you speak in such language, only God can understand. Nobody can understand. Okay. Moreover, who was the person who was filled with the Holy Spirit? It is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. He was filled with the Holy Spirit without measure. How many times did Jesus speak in tongues, you tell me? Not even one time is recorded in the Bible. You see, then, therefore, we need to think and study and we have come to know that this is not by God. Okay. Then, originally, why was this gift of the tongues given? If you see, the gift of the tongues was given to the disciples so they may go and preach the word of God to the ends of the earth. Read Luke 24, 47, brother. Luke 24, 47. Gopal, brother, can you read? And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning at Jerusalem, you should speak to all nations. All nations is what? India, America, Germany, various places, dear brethren. You see? From Jerusalem, we should go to every place. Imagine, Thomas came to India. Isn't it? Thomas came to India. He landed in Kerala. He was the first convert was a Brahmin. You see? And how did he speak uh, when he came to India? You see, by God's gift of the Holy Spirit, he could easily speak, uh, you see, the Kerala language, the Malayali language. And that is how he began to preach the word of God. You see, this was a special gift given to the disciples when the initial church has to be established all over the world. Therefore, this is actually the reverse of Babel. Remember Genesis 10 chapter? 
when the whole world had a common language, they began to build a tower going to heaven and God confounded their language. Hence, everybody got settled as per the language. Now, God is reversing it. Why? Because the truth has to go to all the people. So, if the apostles did not know to speak in a local language, how will they convince other people? Hence, this gift was given only to the apostles, not to everybody. You see, and only to the people upon whom apostles, apostles laid the hands, it was given only to them. And it could not further be transferred. Clearly understood, dear brethren. Please concentrate. The ends, this gift was given only to the apostles. And apostles could transfer this gift to other disciples when they laid their hands upon them. But the disciples who got this gift from the apostles, they could not further transfer to anybody. Hence, if you read in the Bible, you see, this gift was you know, passed on from the apostles to other disciples only when they laid their hands. And that is the reason Apostle Paul desired, you see, very earnestly that he may go to Rome and dispense this gift to the disciples. Let us read a few verses. Acts 19.6 Acts 19.6 Anil brother, can you read? And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they, they spake with tongues and prophesied. See, when Apostle Paul laid their hands, then only they speak in tongues, dear brother, not before that one. You see, so this gift, this is not the Holy Spirit. Imagine, this is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Gift of the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit is different. You see, so those two things are different. Holy Spirit is common for everybody. Okay, those who immerse in Christ. But this gift uh, was passed on only by the apostles when they laid their hands. Read uh, 2 Timothy 1 6 also, brother. 2 Timothy 1 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir of the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on my hands. See, by putting on my hands, sir. The gift, you see. Huh? Now read Romans 1 11 also. For I long to see you that I may impart ye unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. See, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. Why, Apostle Paul only? There are so many disciples who went to Rome. But none of the apostles had went to Rome. Hence, Apostle Paul desired so that I may go to Rome and dispense some spiritual gift by laying of his hands. And uh, this uh, secret of apostles laying their hands and getting the gift, uh, Simon recognized. So hence, once what happened, when he saw the apostles doing this one, he came and approached them and gave them money. Please give me the power so that uh, whomsoever I lay the hand, uh, I may dispense this gift. Uh, but he could not get it. Forget about giving money. Without the money also, he could not have get it. Because that was not a criteria. Let us read Acts 8, chapter 17 to 20. Joel Buddha, can you read? Acts 8, chapter 17 to 20. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through Laying on of the apostles, hence the holy ghost was given. He offered the money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever whom I lay hands, he may receive the holy ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thou that thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. See? So it could not be transferred to Simon also. And uh, Simon could not further transfer to anybody else. So because that was the end. Therefore, when should all this gift uh, should stop? We should all stop once the persons who received the gift 
from the apostles lived once they all died all this gift uh, passed away they all stopped they all ceased this is what apostle paul clearly tells in first corinthians 13 chapter that all these things uh, shall stop read first corinthians 13 chapter verses 8 to 10 uh Muna sister, can you read 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 8 to 10? Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophes prophes prophecy in part, but when that which is perfect, is come then that which is in part shall be done away mm, you see what does it say prophecy will fail tongues will cease it will stop not that it will be forever and ever when when it will stop it says when that which is perfect is come that which is in part will be done away now, which is that perfect that has to come this was the completion of the Bible. Once the apostles lived, the Bible was in the process of writing. So once the Bible was completely completed, it was no other necessary, it was not necessary further to give all this, uh, you see, uh, uh, gift of tongues and all these things because Bible was there. It was translated in as many languages as possible. So it was easy to communicate. So that is when all these things are uh, seized away. Therefore, dear brethren, so what the Bible says about tongues and today what we are seeing in the churches is totally different thing. See, today, you see, the pastor, the leader, what all he speaks, what all tongues he speaks, it is the same thing that is repeated uh, by the people of the church. Each and every church members has a unique type of tongues, what they speak. You see, what the leader speaks, the same thing be repeated. Are you? Why repeat the same sentence? If you are speaking to God, why repeat the same sentence? Repeat the different, different things. No? Why repeat the same things? If you are speaking to God, you should your communication should be much more elaborate. You should speak various things. No? Why keep on repeating the same things to God? You see, therefore, dear brethren, tongues is a language where, you see, everybody can understand. And moreover, if you if you see the people who are speaking tongues, their behavior, the way they react, uh, you see, and the way they fall, the way they jump, the way they scream, you see, this is not uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. This is not the work of the Holy Spirit. None of the apostles, when they did miracles, nobody jumped, nobody laughed, and nobody screamed, and they were, uh, you see, appositely, you see, running away, and the clots and all were uh, scattered. No. None of the apostles did such things. You see? So, this is the confusion what we are seeing in the churches today. This is not the confusion what the Bible says. You see, God is not the author of confusion. But God is the author of peace. Let us read 1 Corinthians 14.3. Joel brother, can you read 1 Corinthians 14.3? For God is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all her, as in all churches of the saints. See, God is not author of confusion. He is author of peace. You see? So, Jesus uh, did so many things. Uh, no, nobody fell down like this one. And nobody screamed. And nobody shouted. You see? And moreover, you observe it. Every week the same person will come. Every week the same person will fall down. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. How many times did Jesus fell? How many times did the apostles fell? None of the people, none of the time also. So, we need to study miracles from the Bible. So, that one we will see next week. So, this week you studied only tongues. So, tongues in the Bible means is an understandable language, not that it is an unknown language which nobody can understand. It's a clear language which everybody should understand and clearly understand. And if there is no interpreter in the church, Apostle Paul says, better keep silent. And it is better to speak five words so that everybody can understand 
rather speaking so many words which nobody can understand okay and uh, the interpreter and the condition in the church is that only two or three should speak not more than that one you get dear brethren so uh, we we'll stop here we will continue next week about miracles